Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with a different animal when it comes to 3D printing. Hey Gears has very kindly sent me out a full set of their new printing setup. So that is the printer, the wash station and the cure station for their new consumer level 3D printer. Hey Gears traditionally makes 3D printers for business use. Dental use is their main thing. So orthodontics, these things print dentures. So that's the kind of high quality of something that's good enough to go in your mouth, then I'm sure it's good enough to produce miniatures. And like I said, this is very new to the market with a commercial printer, and they very kindly sent me one out so I could test it, see what I think of it, see what kind of miniatures I can produce. And I must tell you straight off the bat that this is like nothing that I have ever experienced before when it comes to 3D printers. I think I'm over 20 printers I own now, and this just feels different. So if you're interested to find out why that is, then stick around throughout this video as I will do my very best to tell you all about the different features that come with this incredible printer. Before I get into the video though, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys literally keep the lights on and the camera rolling. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. If you're interested in getting involved with that, there's links in the description below. You get access to daily vlogs, finding behind the scenes content about what's going on with me, with the studio, with the hobby and what all that goodness every single day. And you also get access to private Discord server where you can talk to me about your own hobby every day as well. So it's a pretty good place to be. If you're interested in that, check it out below. Okay, without further ado, let's try and delve in and explain some of the features that exist with this 3D printer. Now, this is their custom slicing software. Now, normally, I'm not gonna lie, slicing software that is custom designed for a specific printer is usually not very good and you end up just using things like Lychee anyway. This one, however, is just incredible. You choose the printer, you choose the resin, you choose the vat that's being used, all those things, and it sets up this perfect build plate it knows exactly what you want and what you want to do. After that, you literally just import all of your parts. You don't think about where they're going, where they're fitting, any of that jazz. I personally choose, chose all the unsupported versions of everything from the files that I was using. This great Narlock that I am printing out. And it is quite a complicated piece. Bunch of arms, big giant torso, big head, awkward looking weapon. Not the easiest thing in the world to use. But after I have included all of the parts onto the build plate, usually this is where the task begins. You usually have to try and orientate everything, secure everything. Whereas with this one, you just click do it itself and it goes through this entire checklist. First thing it does is repair all of the parts, absolutely every one of them. It scans them, looks for any imperfections, any holes, anything that's off and it repairs each and every part. And as you can see, they're going a kind of a gray color or a brighter gray color when they have finished being repaired. And by the way, I'm just looking at this screen right now. I'm not pressing any buttons. I hit automatically do this for me, please. And it did. Next thing it's gonna do is automatically orientate it to the best orientation for printing. After that, it's going to automatically add all the supports and I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, these are the best auto supports that I have ever seen on a 3D print. After that, it places them on the build plate in the optimized way for space and uh, printing. Absolutely ingenious. I cannot believe it was this easy to get a print like this ready. After this, you simply just upload it to the cloud that is attached to this software and then it will automatically be sent to your 3D printer. So you can walk into a different room or a different building. It will be popped up on your screen, new print available. You hit print and away you go. Like, what can I say? As a core concept, that is the most unbelievable thing that I've ever seen when it comes to 3D printing. One of the first things I wanna get out of the way before I show you some of the actual printing aspect of it is to talk very quickly about the resin that they do produce. Now, the resin that they produce is quite an interesting concept because unlike every other resin brand or 3D printer, you just buy a bottle of resin and you pour it into the vat and then away you go. Some of them have turned the bottle upside down, it goes inside the machine and it slowly drips in. Very cool. These ones work kind of like cartridges for a standard printer, so your ink cartridges. You literally twist off the top, there is a quick release valve on the top, so even if I turn this upside down now, no resin is going to come out. The valve is sealed until it is put into the back of the machine and connects with it. It will then release the correct amount of resin depending on how you print or what you're printing. One of the very interesting things is if you feel the container here, there's like an IRFD code or whatever the thing is. Thing that the computer can scan. I'm not very good with the technical side of things. So as you put this 
basically cartridge into the printer. It will scan that code. It will tell the 3D printer how much resin is in the bottle. And it will also tell you what type of resin it is. And then the 3D printer itself will set all of its settings, lift speed, temperature, all those bits and pieces will get set perfectly from this. So no longer do you have to go into the slicing software itself, find out what the resin is, find the correct specs for it, input that in manually before you slice your files. It is all done by itself automatically from these balls. Okay guys, I'm coming at you from quite a bizarre location. Um, this is the little rooms that exist on the side of my studio. So my studio is actually in an attic. So in between the eaves are these nice big rooms. I had this attic designed so that the walls were pulled out a little bit. So these storage spaces behind them were actually quite large. Like I'm six foot two and I can stand up in here, which is really cool. Um, I intended originally to use it as storage, which most of it is. It's filled up with all my piles of shame or opportunity, whatever you want to call them. But obviously I also use them as a safe place to store active 3D printers. So ones that I'm working on and ones that I'm printing with. So obviously I'm doing test videos today for the new Hay Gears printer. It is absolutely incredible. I got the full setup um, done here. So the Hay Gears printer itself, the uh, cure station and the wash station is all set up nice and neatly together. Normally I would just take the printer out Put it on my table outside where I do my intros and outros and I would show you guys that from there. It is too heavy. It's a 35 kilo machine. It is a nightmare. Getting through that little door in here, I nearly killed myself. I don't particularly want to mess with it. It's a very expensive machine. I don't want to treat it with the kind of respect. So it lives here now. This is where it will stay until it ever needs to be taken apart for maintenance or anything like that. So I'm going to leave it as is. What's currently on the print is I just finished my second large scale fruit print and basically I'm printing out a bunch of great narlocks for use for the new uh, crew army that Games Workshop has brought out so absolutely stunning result on this second one so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it off the print bed and then I'm gonna get it into the wash station I'll show you how that works but first of all I need to get some gloves on before I touch any of the actual machinery that's to touch resin. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll be back to you guys. Okay so these are just simple trays I buy from Ikea and they're what I use to remove print from print beds with. So I take said print, I'll print it perfectly, absolutely no fails whatsoever. These print quite stiff to the print bed so they can be kind of annoying to remove. But I'd rather it be like that than um, have failed supports. So put our print bed back on the into the printer now. Okay, from here we have one of the tubs from the wash station, which is obviously this one here. We take the said prints, we plop them in nicely, making sure that they're all completely submerged. And then we put the lid back on the wash station. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the wash station is one of the most bizarre designs that I've ever seen. And I wasn't sure about it when they first showed it off, but it works quite like this. I choose how long, which is three minutes, and I hit. And this is the bizarre way that it uh, rotates around. Now I thought this was gonna have a much bigger effect on its surroundings. I thought if there was like something here, it would rock and fall over. But you can see all these totes and all these like frames and all the bits and pieces that are around it. They're not, it's not disturbing the table like I thought it would, which then was kind of strange. Um, but it definitely does a really good job of like sloshing the liquid around and making sure that the prints really are washed properly. So this is the thing I was the most skeptical about with the Hay Gears new design for stuff. And um, so far I've been really wrong. It's been really, really good. Okay, the wash cycle is now finished. And now I'm gonna show you another really, really interesting design from this particular wash station. This is the top tub. And if you'll notice, there's two different tubs. There's one on top and one on the bottom. As you can see, the liquid is up to here and this. Now in normal wash stations, you would have to dig your hands into here and get out your prints that you can still see through the material, yeah? Now, usually there's baskets and all sorts, but it's still very harmful material. It's not stuff you wanna to be touching. So what they've done is with the double tub solution, there's a little, literally a little valve here that I turn. Now the liquid that's inside this one is now draining and going inside this one. It will take a little bit of time, but that's okay. I forgot to open the air. There we go. So I forgot to open the air valve on the top. 
which means that you can see the liquid now draining out and it is gonna go into the bottom one. Once that's done, you close the valve again, you swap the tubs around so the liquid is once again on top and then you just take out your prints without touching any of that stuff. I think it's a very clever and an inventive way, I can't say that word, inventive, inventive way, inventive way of, um, of getting that done. So super happy with that one. Okay, now I can just open up the tub and inside we will find all of our prints washed, ready to go. An empty tub, which is exactly what we want. Close it up again. And then like I said, we just swap the top one with the bottom one and we are ready to go again. Okay, now as goes for supports, these things do come with some fairly delicate supports, but it is the most advanced kind of self-supporting thing that I've ever seen. It means that I get a huge piece like this and I can just do that. Then you can see these pretty much flawless prints. Like look at that huge piece. How easily I removed the supports from that. And there's no dimples, there's no marks, there's nothing left behind from the hundreds of supports that were attaching this thing and you can't see any suggestion of where those supports were. It's absolutely insane. So I'm gonna to continue to do that with these other parts. Off, off, off. And of course, the last part of preparing a miniature for paint is to cure it. And this is the uh, particular cure station. It's quite large. It's kind of like a mini fridge. It's very aesthetically pleasing, which I know that doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people, but to me it does. I really like the look of the whole three um, setup. As you can see, it cracks open as per usual. You put your print in the middle of it that I like to remove all supports, construct the miniature, and then I like to cure it. I just find that to be the easiest way to do it. Um, now, one of the things that I haven't quite figured out just yet about their cure station, like, this setup, these three machines, the designers of them definitely went above and beyond. They didn't just take the company star, the, the community standard for what a 3D printer is. They definitely redesigned a lot of things. So that's very evident with the printer, very evident with the wash station. With the cure station, what difference is a cure station to any other cure station? And honestly, I can't tell what the main difference is, except for the fact that when you put a print into a no normal cure station, they recommend you cur cure for between kind of five to eight minutes will cure a print. The preset for this one is 30 minutes. So when I hit go, it's now curing, but it's going to be curing for 30 minutes. Why is it taking longer? I don't think for a second it's because it's a worse machine. I definitely think they've designed it in a way or they've figured out something or maybe it's less light over a longer period of time makes it a stronger print less for i don't know but yeah it does a job anyway cures the print beautifully Unfortunately, have to wait another 29 minutes now before i can take that out and uh, continue with the video so a bit of patience is required and i think without a shadow of a doubt we can look at the unbelievable results that we have achieved from this printer obviously we can talk about it until we're blue in the face but unless we know the results then you know what does my say matter well these are the prints that i did quite complicated quite large quite awkward to print pieces and they came out incredibly i'm going to be super excited to paint these awesome big crude monsters up for my new crude army i'm doing for 40 000. i'm very excited to get some paint on it as of finishing getting this video ready to release to you i am immediately going in and getting the rest of these miniatures constructed getting them based um, getting them sprayed and maybe actually adding some paint to them so if a print does that to you makes you that excited to keep going then i think it does a pretty good job okay guys and there we have it my review on the hey gears reflex printer setup what can i say i think that the machine itself is incredible it is definitely a next level printer there's so many features so many bits and pieces about it that are unlike anything I've ever seen on any other 3D printer. Now, having said that, 
is quite expensive. You are definitely paying for the quality and the advancement technology. It is two and a half thousand dollars for the full three machine setup that I showed off in today's video, which is a good bit more expensive than any other printer out there on the market. If that is worth it or not, that is totally up to you. For me, I love all the features. I love the accessibility of it. And I think if you want to go into high-end 3D printing, like if you are a miniature painter and you want to enter things like Gold Demon, you want to print out parts or busts or, or models for painting competitions, then I think a printer like this is definitely the way to go. If you just want to print off reams of shoulder pads to stick onto Space Marines, then perhaps you don't need to go as extravagant as this machine. Having said that, it limits the amount of exposure that you're gonna have with the resin. It's about as easy to use as anything I've seen. So from a convenience point of view, I know that I'm a huge fan of 3D printing. It's another hobby entirely. Um, but I spend just as much time fighting with machines as I do using machines. Um, and sometimes that's fun to kind of tinker, find out why something is going wrong, change out parts and do all that kind of things. But the average person, that's just an annoyance and they don't want to have to deal with it. Well, I think this machine is going to take most of that away and you're just going to be able to literally plug in, print, play. So for me, I definitely think the machine is worth the price, but I cannot tell you if it's worth it for you. That is just up to you. Hopefully the information in this video helped you make that decision. If you're curious to check it out for yourself, like I said, there are links in the description below to take you to the Hey Gears website where you can check it out for yourself and decide if it's a machine for you or not. If you found this video useful, interesting, or exciting, please do give it a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. I will answer them to the best of my abilities. And if you're looking for more content like this, make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Thank you guys so much for sticking around at the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.